This is news. Now I thought I was subscribed to them already. Hold on. Turn it up some. My family ancestors for thousands upon thousands of years are growing in the trees and are in the ground around us. And when we see something like a cop city attempting to be built, no way is that congruent with the energies of life that brings us all together. We have the largest police force in the state of Georgia. We have the largest firefighting force in the state of Georgia. The Public Safety Training Center is for both firefighters and police in the city of Atlanta to conduct their training. Hold on, what? What? Hold on, let's look at those numbers again. That the cost of the project is currently estimated at 90 million 30 million coming from taxpayers and 60 million coming from taxpayers either taxpayers or private companies but that's crazy I knew it. I knew I knew it had to be those corporations. To get 60 million fundraising. So let's look at that. JP Morgan, Wells Fargo, ATT, Delta, Federal Reserve Bank of Atlanta. Y'all know the Federal Reserve was uh the meeting was held right outside, not even outside of Georgia. It was it, it's in Georgia. And it's called Jekyll Island. And uh, it's a real place. I've been there. And that place has a different type of energy. Has anybody ever been to Jekyll Island? And and, and um, in uh, Georgia, it's right, it's right out, like, it's not that far from Jacksonville. But it's, it's not in Florida. It's in, it's in Georgia. It's called Jekyll Island. And that's where the Federal Reserve, uh, that's where the meeting was birthed to the, that, the meeting that gave birth to the Federal Federal uh, Reserve was in Jekyll Island, Georgia. So that's very strange that this is happening in Georgia. So Amazon, Waffle House, Waffle House is crazy. Equifax, a real hippie, Chick-fil-A. You know Chick Fil A. Uh, man, more specific. In local animals calling for cancellation of class day. Protests are shot to death after official confrontation with protesters out there trying to with domestic terrorism. <laughs> <laughs> there has been really widespread opposition to the COP City project. There are residents that fear environmental devastation. There are citizens that are concerned that a historic site is being destroyed. This is the location of the Atlanta prison farm. There are people that are against over-policing and they are concerned that $90 million is being spent to train local law enforcement officers in military strategies. Exactly and then there are people happening. like me who are very concerned with government transparency issues. And there has been lack of transparency and widespread misinformation around this project. Mm -hmm. Our elected officials have said over and over again, well, now that we've voted, there's nothing we can do to stop it. And that is simply not true. The lease, the agreement between the city and the Atlanta Police Foundation can be broken. 
this piece of property is outside of the city limits of the city of Atlanta. It's actually in a neighboring county, DeKalb County. That means that the people that are the most affected by this project, the people that will have um, the forest that they live around destroyed, that will have to deal with helicopters flying overhead, live ammunition, ongoing protests, those people are being disenfranchised because they cannot directly appeal to their elected officials because this project is in a county and is not attached to the city. This is an opportunity for forces to come together across the country and uh, show our resistance because they're not going to do this on our watch. When the vote happened to approve this project in 2021, over 1,000 people showed up to give public comment, and the vast majority of them, 70%, opposed the project. But they voted well, to approve right the there. project anyway. When you no. tell your constituents that they can't vote, that they can't make calls, they can't no, knock they on don't. doors, of course they take to the streets to protest. Come on, y'all, they can't really Of course it's the protest. The completed cocktail will be among the largest training centers in, oh my goodness, that's scary. Continue with activities appear to be widespread, corporate funded, entirely. That's exactly what's going on here. Nothing less. This will be dangerous. Yeah, let's check the, look at the comments. Sean Lewis said taxpayers, or taxpayers again, I guess you're talking about who paying for it, pretty much. You know, all it's all coming from the people, so. Waffle House is in bed with the, with the mob, yeah. That was crazy, Waffle House was on that list. Got to keep the wholesome memories of the prison farm preserved. Yeah, it's getting, drones versus guns is not a good look, though. Mm. Stop Cop City. Yo, that's crazy that. This is what they're trying to do. Here go another one. Karen sent me this one too. We're going to check it out. This one is police versus Atlanta, the battle over Cop City. This video a little bit longer. It's 15 minutes uh, by AJ, AJ Plus channel. It's a big channel covering that. 1.3 million. I'll subscribe to them. And uh, hold on, y'all. Forget the plan. That's crazy, man. Reconstruct barricades to keep police out, police construction, contracting companies. You hear gunshots all the time because there's a police firing range in this. Yeah, you can hear those shots right there. Occupying this forest is how activists are resisting the construction of a $90 million state-of-the-art police training center protesters call Cop City. The right. facility will be developed on one of right. the largest green spaces in Southeast Atlanta, which has a history of oppression. All of it. It will be clear-cut. They cannot wait. They just want to go in and bulldoze everything and then write the history the way, the way that what they write it. The fate of the forest is up in the air as the police and forest defenders both what refuse to back down. Uh, those people, uh, to me, through their acts, are actually domestic terrorists. Major corporations are pouring millions into this project, financially pressuring politicians to build Cop City. Why did you vote to approve this facility? Surrounding neighborhoods that are more than 75% Black say their concerns have been silenced. Our opinion doesn't matter. It doesn't count. It's disrespect. And that's what folks who live here ought to be just enraged about. One of the things I tell young men, well, and young women as well, but the young men really need to hear this more, I think. You should...
I still get anxious when I'm like coming down. This forest defender who goes by Fruit Bat has been living in trees for the past six months. You know, the banner says stop destroying Earth. The great thing also is that you don't have to destroy the tree to live in it. These forest defenders are a coalition of activists operating without a centralized leadership. It makes me feel like I'm part of something greater than myself. Fruit Bat is using a pseudonym because he's afraid of getting tracked and punished by authorities. The police, FBI, and other agencies are currently investigating the movement against Cop City. You know, the SWAT team has come through here before and arrested people. Several protesters were arrested during a police raid after a confrontation in which activists allegedly threw Molotov cocktails at officers. Forest defenders say authorities have continued to destroy tree houses during raids. Sort of a main gallery. As we toured the forest, we heard gunshots for hours. And you can hear the gun firing. That's coming from a police firing range that already exists nearby. The plan right, so is to expand that do? into an 85-acre campus. What? That's as big as nearly 64 football fields put together. The facility would be one of the man. biggest in the U.S. As you can what? see here in a video plan provided by the Atlanta Police Foundation, among the training features will be a burn tower for firefighters, a shooting range, and a mock village, including a school and residential homes. But residents who live nearby say they were blindsided by the city's plan to expand the massive police facility. This happened literally yeah, back no there. reason no, no one has reached out to me. I do see when they ask for votes. I do see that. Chenard owns a tow truck business near the proposed facility and lives in a neighborhood that is more than 76% black. You can head to the backyard. Hold on, y'all. The forest is literally probably about... Um, black is near the proposed span. And among the trusts... 64 football fields. And they already have a range over there. What? Why would you cut down so much forest for no reason? Or the reason you have is just ridiculous. It's so many abandoned buildings, things that need to be redone. No. 12 acre emergency vehicle operations course. What? 12 acres? Oh my goodness. That's a lot of, that's a lot of space taken up, man. Probably about um, less than a mile. Police Academy is kind of like over there where they train at, so. The existing gun range already disturbs his day-to-day -day life. Once the dogs hear fireworks, gunshots, they go to, you know, having all kind of issues, running away. I'm not sure if they're trying to force us out of the community uh, and just take over the whole community overall, uh, but that's what it looked like the way we, the, the, the path we headed down. Atlanta's proposal to construct the police facility here speaks to the land's painful history. The site was a prison farm until 1995. Prisoners there oh, yeah. were subjected to harsh punishments and slave conditions, right. including poor sanitation, nutrition, and overcrowding. Some critics say claims of unmarked graves have not yet been properly investigated. Before that, the land is thought to have been a plantation that enslaved at least 19 people. It was originally stolen from the Muscogee, who lived there until the U.S. government forcefully displaced them to Oklahoma. Today, both activists and tribal members have reclaimed the indigenous name as Willani People's Park. Local advocates have long called for the area to be preserved as a historical site. Because they just can't wait. Wow. They cannot wait. They just want to go in and bulldoze everything and then write the history. Wow. So not only is are they trying to take over 64 football fields of land. They're doing this in land that was stolen uh, from the native people there and where they tortured people. Now they want to turn it into the ultimate training grounds for that. Then it was old plantation. So police used to be uh, the first police 
the first police officers were slave catchers. So, wow, the, the whole thing ties in 360. Through the way, the way that they want to write it and be done with it. They, they haven't even done proper, you know, ecological surveys yet. But Cop City isn't the only facility that the residents have opposed. Around the forest is a Hollywood studio, sanitation center, juvenile prison, oh, yeah, and asphalt and trucking factories. So that's Key Road Landfill. Nobody wants to, in, to address the, the environmental injustice of this. Those issues have never been vetted. The facilities have severely polluted Entrenchment Creek, which flows downstream to the South River. Jacqueline Eccles is trying to prevent the construction of Cop City from an environmental perspective. When we were here about a month and a half ago, uh, we, we pulled uh, 100 tires out of the river and 40, 50 bags of trash. When you look at the rivers, uh, the creeks, none of them meet water quality standards. And the cheapest way to improve water quality is to protect the green space. In a 2017 report by the city's planning department, the South River Forest was designated one of Atlanta's four major lungs. Now, the city is walking back on its vision to conserve the forest. Uh, to just turn around and have just disrespect the community, because, you know, it's, it's not, they, they never cared about the river. So we, we can accept that. But you're disrespecting the people who live in South Atlanta. And that's what folks who live here ought to be just enraged about. Some neighborhoods around the forest are more than 90 percent black and are low income with health challenges such as asthma. Getting rid of the green space will also leave them vulnerable to impacts like stormwater flooding. And it's not like you can create a situation to moderate the impact. You can't. Now, keep in mind, during the few times the public did voice their concerns, the overwhelming majority expressed opposition. Me as a black woman living in Atlanta, that's no place for me if we got a cop city going on. In fact, one hearing in September 2021 lasted for 17 hours, where around 70 percent of comments were against cop city. Regardless, city council passed the plan in a 10 to 4 vote. What is going on with the city? Ordinarily, you would have a city who has control. In a 10 to 4 We need to see who voted. Brown said no. Smith said no. Archbomb said no. And Idy said no. Everybody who said yes, those are not... The only people that's for the people are the people who said no. So y'all take account of that. I am. Uh, this the only people who I would even think about voting for. The ones who said no to this. Everybody who said yes, I don't care if you look like me, uh, you are not my people if you if you voting for stuff like that. Why aren't they building Cop City in Chicago? Like that would even help. Yeah, my bad. So I just want to make sure. Four vote. What is going on with the city? Ordinarily, you would have a city who has control over the police. In this case, the police have the control over the city. So why did council members approve this facility? It's important to understand the police foundation in Atlanta. It's considered one of the most powerful police foundations in the country. For instance, when the mayor was elected, the CEO of the foundation served on his transition committee. Among those sitting on its board are leaders of corporations like UPS, Wells Fargo, Chick-fil-A, Home Depot, and Delta Airlines. The APF raises investments to finance police projects like Cop City. Of the $90 million needed to build the facility, $60 million will be funded by the foundation's corporate donors. The remaining... Crazy. Crazy. I'm surprised Walmart isn't on this list. 30 million will likely be paid by taxpayers. Well before the council voted on the facility, the police foundation had been lobbying council members. And the cost? 
the city leased the land to the foundation for just $10 per year for the next 50 years. No more Home Depot. Lowe's, Lowe's, that's it. Hey, I'm Nick. And this is the Alpa 50 liter duffel bag. Yeah, it's hard. Our best selling Alpa has transformed into a burly travel nice duffel bag. that carries like a backpack whenever you please. With ample okay, space for big adventures, up. this all 50 up. liter duffel is ideal for cross country and international travel. It's made from a TPU coated 1000D polyester on top and 840D ballistic nylon fabric on top. Nobody wants polyester. Two of the council members who approved the plan agreed to sit down for an interview. Why did you vote to approve this facility? It's going to be a big recruiting pool. We have a, a duty, I think, yeah, an interesting obligation case. to provide our employees with the best in class of everything. But you also have an obligation to listen to what the community is saying, right? Do you feel like you've done that? Yes, I feel that I've How? done that. I'm a How? representative. I'm what are you talking about? The 70% said they don't constantly. like it. There were multiple chances for the public to speak. I've never been to a neighborhood planning unit meeting or a neighborhood meeting uh, where I have been told we don't want this. So why like, here? One, like, isn't it's no way what I see be that is a quote unquote forest, especially no not an old growth forest. Uh, if you go out to the, to the uh, land, which I've been to many times, um, there's a lot of invasive species. But those who frequent the park daily say it's brought unique that. value to the neighborhood. So to them, it may not be a park, but to somebody else, it does mean something. It's a saying it's true. One man's junk is another man's treasure. But these, these are the same individuals don't even live in the community. They don't live in the community. They don't care what they care. They don't care at all. These yeah, same city councilmen, would you allow it in your community? Would you allow this to take place in your community? Would you allow a landfill to be built in your community? Would you allow a police uh, uh, academy of this magnitude to be built in your community? The city is determined to proceed with building Cop City. Meanwhile, forest defenders have demolished equipment that they say attempted to destroy the forest. It's like become kind of a relic of significance, just to show, you know, kind of what happens if people want to come and destroy the forest. It just shows that we're not going to cooperate with the police or talk to the police. It's why not everyone agrees with the way defenders have been resisting. Some of them have embraced militant tactics, vandalizing police and private contractor vehicles. Other critics say they do not represent the communities living in Southeast Atlanta. Okay, we, we don't see eye to eye on everything, but we are here trying to defend the forest. The city spokesperson told AJ Plus the current facilities for officers is inadequate and that the new campus is necessary to give officers, quote, up-to-date urban training. Uh, we have gangs, etc. We have to be, at the very least, at that level, if not above it. Less than three what? weeks after the police killing of George Floyd, yeah, an Atlanta again. officer fatally about? shot Rayshard Brooks in the parking lot of a Wendy's. His death reverberated nationwide calls to defund the police, eventually resulting in the burning of the restaurant and the resignation of the city's police chief. But the city's response afterward was to increase police funding to improve officers' morale. Atlanta is one what? of the most surveilled cities in the U.S. with extensive technology. We're not going to skip over that. They want to build all this and do, do all this to raise officer morale. What? What? Jenny, we live in the police state. Yeah, they, I can't believe they actually said that. They want to do all this to raise police morale. Atlanta is one of the most surveilled cities in the U.S. Improve, but the city's response afterward was to increase police funding to improve officers' morale. Atlanta is one of increase funding to improve their morale instead of correcting the bad behavior. The most surveilled cities in the U.S. with extensive technology financed by the Police Foundation. Our neighborhoods are essentially occupied by police. Organizers in majority yeah. Black neighborhoods have been looking for it's internal black solutions black. to combat violence such as de-escalation tactics. Community Movement Builders says the most pressing issues affecting residents are actually food insecurity and homelessness. Atlanta 
is you know known for being a black mecca it's known for having a lot of black politicians but a lot of times those decisions that they make are not in the interests of the black masses here who that are overwhelmingly poor and working class but rather in the interests of their funders the police foundation has said it's incorporated public opinion by promising 265 acres as green space and that it will also invest in trails for the public let me put it this way whoever thought of the, the notion that you can create a park-like environment next to a police training facility you can go out and walk along the trail and, and just hear the gunfire go off i yeah, mean it's almost pop. like that's what you're used to anyway right so we just bring it in home kind of thing <laughs> you know the police foundation says it will move forward with the construction and open by the right. end of 2023 but families and schools are refusing to let that define the future. Stop up city! Stop up city! Stop up city! They're hoping increased awareness will stop the construction. Don't cut down the tree. <laughs> this forest is important for me because it reflects what is happening worldwide now. You know, even though we have uh, an urgency and climate emergency, the rich people of this world, you know, keeps extracting and keep making themselves richer and richer. Not all protesters we spoke to were anti-police. Some were hopeful officers could receive better training to deal with nonviolent cases involving mental health issues. I'm all for the cops training centers. Do it, because the cops need to be trained, but yeah. not at the risk of cutting down the forest. But they collectively agree oh, they're wow. done letting the city right. sideline their voices. This they don't need more training ground. This is going to do. This is a fight about... The first, the first step of their training can be right indoors in a in a room uh, that fits like maybe a hundred people, uh, and they just do classes on teaching the law and how to uh, actually interact with the public. I think now don't they don't even teach de-escalation. They teach that people are the enemy and that you need to do and you need to go over and above because like they're so scared of the public so they're training they don't need to be more sharp with their killing skills like what why why are they working on improving their killing skills versus uh, real training on how to how to treat the public and how to uh, manage stress. You don't need a uh, sixty four uh, football field wide course to learn what that. What you and I are going to do? City Hall doesn't have the last word on this fight. We have the last word on this fight. <laughs> Back on the front lines of the movement, forest defenders hope to delay construction by nerd. Hold on, hold on. I don't mean to keep stopping, but I want to catch up with the chat, y'all. Say, Federal Reserve is a corporate donor. Yep. That's crazy. Federal Reserve. Yep. We live in a. <laughs> I feel like it, they, what do you mean? They like, I don't know why they think they want to get more money to raise their morale. Like what? Don't be a cop if you don't like it, simple. Nobody uh, pitched the job as a safe and pleasant. They know that <laughs> it's crazy. Like they knew that they were get, getting into something that was dangerous and most people didn't get into it because they were so gun ho in protecting the community. They saw it as a means to make money. And people, oh, cops, this and that and that and this and that. When people aren't, people didn't choose those jobs because they cared about, you know, cleaning up the streets. They just wanted a paycheck. Tomorrow. They need more training, not training grounds, right? 
But I said, you can't do both. Either help the people or destroy lives. Or a means to gain control. That's it. That's all. Like, they're trying to, you know, they turn into the military. It's pretty much, I'm telling you, like, even in Tampa, their sheriff's office is like a, I'm telling you, it's like, it's like a, a military base. Nurturing a communal space. We call this the water buffalo. This is what we use to store water. People are supporting the movement with water and food donations. From all angles of resistance, people living both in and around the forest are determined to embrace the green space as the anchor of community. I've just had so many great experiences in those woods. At least these people are out there enjoying it right now. We're envisioning a society that we want in the future. And the only way to get there is to envision it, to name it, to show it, and to gather people who believe in that vision. You know, the nature of the preserve, the, the wildlife, all that kind of good stuff they have brought to this community. And they're saying, hey, we're just going to take it away. Come on, that's not right. That's not right by no means. That's inaccurate. How is that inaccurate? You don't think if you take out that many trees, it's going to make an impact? Yeah, they just don't care. Yeah. If anybody says taking out that amount of forest is not going to have a significant impact on the environment around you, you literally, th that makes no sense. Like no rational person is going to think, oh, if we destroy this much, it's not going to have no impact on the environment. That's why we're dealing with so much uh, environmental problems now because they're chopping down and burning everything and making places unlivable. But you got military training for the police to raise their morale and, you know, give them more killer skills. Crazy, man. Crazy. Yeah, I like this shirt too, man. Carbon offsetting alone, it, exactly. Carbon offsetting alone is significant. That that is a big chunk. You got to think, okay, the environment. What about that ecosystem in that area? What about all those uh, bugs, uh, all those animals in that area? It's like everything. Like, how could you say that it's not going to make a big impact? That once you say stuff like that, then I know that you know you you don't care about anything at that point. Pretty much, you you you're just you're not you're not gonna tell the truth at that point. If you say you think it's inaccurate that it's gonna have issues, and you're not talking or you never say anything about the impact that it will have, then just to make it seem like it's not a big deal so you can move forward with the project, terrible.